Welcome to PC Couch Gamer. I'm your host, the Internet's Buzz Stringer. I'd like to talk about controllers, what works and what doesn't work when gaming on the couch. I have three controllers here, which I think are good representative samples of controllers that are on the market today. And, of course, a keyboard and mouse. We have an Xbox One controller, a DualShock 4, and the Steam controller. Whilst more feature-heavy controllers are out there, like the Xbox One Elite and the Scuf controllers, they both have the same advantages and drawbacks as their standard counterparts. We'll start with the ergonomics, the DualShock 4. This one I've modified the face buttons on and replaced them with A, B, X, Y. Before I switched to PC gaming, I spent nearly 20 years gaming on PlayStation, so the DualShock is often my weapon of choice when it comes to comfort. The Xbox One control is also comfortable to use for long gaming sessions and has no disadvantage over the others. So when it comes to the great debate versus of Xbox versus PlayStation controllers, that's really down to your personal preference. The Steam controller, is where things get a bit different. The grips are angled upwards, so it definitely feels different to a standard controller, and your thumbs rest naturally on the track pads. With the buttons and analog stick in easy reach, as are the back paddles and the beefy shoulder buttons. All these controllers offer rock solid connectivity and low latency when I'm sitting about 3 to 4 meters away from their dongles. Steam and Xbox controllers have their own wireless dongles and DualShock works over Bluetooth so any decent Bluetooth dongle will work for DualShock and I think Bluetooth will work for up to 7 devices. Steam claims up to 16 controllers on one dongle and Xbox 8, 8 on this huge thing that's as big as something from the 90s. It's 2016 Microsoft, nobody needs a dongle that big. Setup is pretty straightforward with both the Xbox One and Steam controllers. Plug in, hit sync and away you go. DualShock gets a little bit more complicated. You have to download some third party software, pair with Bluetooth and Windows, then set up the software. While it's not a huge problem, it's one more thing to worry about. Steam and Xbox use disposable batteries, I've only had to change them twice in the last year. The DualShock has a built-in rechargeable battery via micro USB, but you'll find yourself charging up once every couple of gaming sessions. Let's get on to the fun stuff. The unique features of the Xbox One controller is pretty much at the bottom of the scale here, unless I'm missing something. The DualShock has a touchpad, which works really well as a mouse for games that have only mouse menus or games with launchers. Although it's 2016 and games with launchers shouldn't exist anymore. Looking at you, Rockstar. The Steam controller probably deserves its own video on features, but in a nutshell, any button can be mapped to any input, and the touchpads can emulate mice, trackballs, analog sticks, buttons, you name it. And the Steam Big Picture mode does a great job of switching between the right touchpad to a mouse when game launchers pop up, or it's in a mouse-only menu, which is pretty cool. Now that we know about controllers, what games can we play on them? Well, the games that play best on DualShock or Xbox One controllers are the games that you would expect. Action, RPGs, beat-em-ups, anything that's been on a console, sports games. And while the Steam controller handles these games fine, the main issue is the lack of second analog stick. The touchpad is a good substitute, but it really does lack the accuracy for fine camera control, which could be a problem in high action RPGs. But for lack of a better word, Classic PC games is where it shines. Although slower than a keyboard and mouse, it really fills the gap. And lets you play games like City Skylines, The Sims, Civilization, Command and Conquer, Portal and Tower Defense games very easily. Although with more and more current games adding controller support, I don't see not having a keyboard and mouse substitute much of an issue in the near future. Another cool feature is that it will wake your computer from sleep or hibernation by pressing the Steam button. And the Steam controller, along with the DualShock 4, also works in Kodi with no issues. And the Xbox One controller, I just couldn't get to play nice with Kodi. So which controller is the best? And the grand answer is... It depends. For most modern games, I'd stick to a console controller. And for the PC-only games is when I'd break out the Steam controller. And obviously, I couldn't finish without mentioning the humble keyboard and mouse. 
A good wireless mouse will happily work if the Steam controller is not your thing, but due to latency, this will not work for CSGO. And aside from the Couch Master, any big lap tray should be good enough. The Couch Master. So are all first person shooters off the table? Well, if you want to play CSGO competitively, or any other FPS online for that matter, then you will be at a huge disadvantage playing with a wireless keyboard or a controller, which is definitely a shame. And while I joked about it before, the Couch Master isn't a terrible solution to the problem if you have the space and can stomach the huge price tag for what is essentially a set of cushions. Okay, so there we have it. These first couple of videos are going to give you a taste of what this channel is about. In the future, we'll bring more in-depth stuff like building gaming PCs from scratch, guides on Kodi, and Steam Big Picture, and how to avoid Windows Desktop, and hopefully a lot more. And hopefully we'll find a solution to the CSGO from the couch problem. Thanks for watching, and if you want to learn more about PC Couch Gaming, hit the like button, get subscribed, and I'll see you next time.